Hello traders, I'm Luke from Discipline Trader and welcome back to the How To Backtest series. This is part two of the series and in this video I'm going to talk you through how I use the questions we looked at in the first part to put together the bones of my backtest. It's crucial that we get this part of the backtest correct as it becomes very cumbersome if we want to start recording other data further down the line. That's why using the questions we looked at in the first part to guide you when building the backtest table is so useful. Let's jump back over to the spreadsheet we were using before to continue where we left off. Okay traders, so welcome back to uh, the backtest series. I know it's been a while, um, apologies for that, but let's move straight into the second part of this series. So at the end of the last video, we had basically put together the questions that were going to form the basis of the backtest. So what I said I would do is run through sort of a backtest myself as like an example through the series so that you can see how I would take an idea, turn that into a back test, get the results, and then basically make decisions from those results. Um, so the back test idea that we were looking at was basically allowing my trades to run for bigger targets. Um, I felt like my analysis and my trading style um, possibly allowed or sort of leaned towards maybe longer term targets, extended targets than the ones I was currently aiming at. and. Uh, this back test aims to find out if that is, um, you know, whether it's achievable or not. So in order to find that out, I put together some questions and I think we went through these before. Um, I've just sort of tidied this uh, sheet up a little bit, uh, but basically the questions are here. And then what I want to do in this video is talk to you about how I move these questions into an actual framework ready to back test. So what my thought processes are is I'm going to take each question and then analyze, well, look at that question and decide how am I going to find the answer to that question. So looking at the first question, will you target an extended level on every trade or only in certain circumstances? My answer to this is to analyze the trades with successful extended targets for common confluences. So what I plan to do here is if I go over to the backtest page, you'll see that I've put something together. Um, I'll quickly run you through obviously the basics of this table. So obviously the date, time, direction, trade type, trade uh, entry type. These are just sort of basic information that I want to know about each trade. Um, and then what I will do here, open, high, low, close and swing point. Open, high, low, close refers to um, those points on the entry candle itself. Again, this is specific to the strategy that I already use. Um, and then the swing point is any nearby swing point um, to that particular uh, entry candle. The reason for that will become clear later um, and I'll talk you through it then. Then this is how I'm going to structure different targets. So I'm going to have a first target, a second target, a trailing target which is going to be the 50 MA and then a structure trailing target which I will again I will talk you through uh, as and when we get to that point. Uh, and then po a possible break even method as well. And then for each trade I'm going, going to include a screenshot um, and any observations. So the observations is key for this first question. We go back to it. Will I target an extended level on every trade? Um, so I'm going to analyze the trades with successful extended targets for common confluences. So this is quite a difficult one to backtest. So what I plan to do is if I can record a screenshot and observations of each trade, um, whether it fails, you know, whether it wins or loses based on this extended target, then within those observations, hopefully I'll start to see a pattern as the back test unfolds. What this might lead to is quite an obvious answer to this question. Um, you know, there may be obvious circumstances whereby I don't target this level, or there may be obvious circumstances where I do target this level. Um, or what it might lead to is a second test or something to test later on. Um, it, de it just depends what I see as I go through the back test because I didn't have anything um, like concrete to to test now um, in terms of circumstances for these extended levels um, basically I'm going to use this test to find out if there are any circumstances um, or if there are any possible se sets of circumstances that I could look at later down the line if that doesn't make total sense at the minute it may become clear maybe in the next part when we actually start looking at um, the results of this test 
Uh, so moving on to the second question, I, how are you going to decide where the extended target level is? This one's an easy one. I'm just going to analyze the results of the above, which means I'm just going to record different targets. Um, I've already mentioned it. I'm going to have a first target, a second target. They're going to be fixed targets. Um, and then I'm going to have a trailing target, which is going to be the 50 um, moving average. And I'm going to have a trailing target, which is going to be based on um, structure levels that price makes as it moves in a particular direction. So if we're long, price moves high, uh, moves higher, sorry, should I say, pulls back a little bit and goes again, then you're going to see an obvious structure there, you know, a structure point on the five minute chart. That's where my stop will come up to, or my, my trailing stop will come up to. And obviously if price breaks that back down below that, then that would take me out. Um, so that's a way of trailing my stop. So those are the type of things I'm going to be testing. And then based on the results, I will know which of these are the most effective. It might turn out that just having fixed targets, you know, is much ben more beneficial than having trailing targets at all, or a particular type of trailing target might be more beneficial than the other. Um, you might find that your trailing targets are just better than fixed targets. Um, who knows? This is what the back test is, is there to find out. Uh, so next question, are you going to use predefined levels as targets or some kind of trailing stop method? Again, we've already talked about this one. I'm just going to I'm going to test both and see which works better. My gut tells me it's probably going to be a combination of the two, um, but we will see. Uh, next question, will you target these extended levels only or will you have staggered targets whereby you take profit off the table as price reaches certain levels? So this again is a similar point to the one above. I think what, we'll, what we will see is that staggered targets are better. Um, but obviously I will be testing staggered targets. So I'll have a first target, which, which will probably be around one to one or 1.5 to one, a second target, which will probably be around two or 2.5 to one. Um, it depends. These two depend really on what the price action looks at within the trade, um, looks like, sorry. So if, um, if, you know, if there's two obvious levels, um, to target, then they will be my fixed targets. Um, again, this will this will be easier to talk you through when we're actually looking at a chart um, rather than just sort of um, trying to vaguely explain what these these target levels would look like. But basically, they will be fixed. And what I mean by that is, once I've placed them at the start of the trade, they won't change. Whereas these these two levels can change at any point. Well, as the 50 moving average moves up or down with the trade, it's obviously changing as each candle forms. And again, as price makes new structure levels, then this level is going to change. So that's the difference, really. Um, if you have staggered targets, will you close equal portions of your trade at each different level? Or will one target level be weighted more than others? So basically what this means is, will I, if I have four targets, two fixed, two trailing, let's say, um, and I'm trading at, I don't know, £40 a point, would I take £10 a point off at each of these levels? Or would I say take... Uh, 15 off at the two fixed ones and then say five on each of the trailing ones again this just depends what the results show which is why the answer is analyze results if it shows that i will be more profit profitable to weight a particular target more than the others so for example the first fixed target if um if i'm taking 50 percent off at that target rather than 25 and that makes me more profitable then of course i'm going to do that um it, again, it just depends what the results show. And then the final question, will there be any situations whereby it would be favorable to move your stop loss once price has reached a certain point? Now this is really difficult because this is um, similar to the first question. This may be true, um, but as it stands, I don't know what possible circumstances they would be. So again, this is where the observations will come in. So I will make observations as I back test with a few to further testing. And the screenshots and the observations column here will help me do that. Um, if I'm seeing repeating patterns or repeating behavior, whereby I think, whereby winning trades or trades that are going well are then going the other way, um, you know, bringing that stop to break even could be uh, a good method. Typically, break even doesn't sit too well with me because. You, a trade entry point is sort of an arbitrary point anywhere within a market. Um, the only reason that the break-even level has any relevance is because that's where you, 
got in. It has no relevance to the market, really. Um, they tend not to be technical levels or anything like that, and that's what I prefer to be uh, dealing with, really. Um, but that said, break-even has a good um, mental effect. You know, if you haven't lost any money on a trade, we're humans. That, that makes us feel better than losing, you know, even a couple of pips. Um, so... There's pros and cons to that approach, which is why I want to include it. I know some people would rather come out at a technical level that makes sense, whether that means they only make a point or only lose a couple of points rather than coming out at break-even um, is up to them. And I know some people would prefer just to come out at break-even, see that zero on that on that trade line, that trade entry, and uh, that will help them keep in the right frame of mind going forward. So that's why I'm including both. Um, so yeah, and that pretty much includes the questions for the backtest. What I included here was other things to test. Now these are things that you could run along alongside your backtest. There might be lingering questions that you've got. So one example I came up with was um, the, effect the effectiveness of a previous close level. Now this is a level that I like to have on my chart. Um, and I already like to use it, but I just thought I would demonstrate it here. And what I would do is, as I go through a backtest, you can see I've done a few examples here. I would just log where the close level was, whether it's been hit, when it was hit, you know, the furthest point it was away, if there was a reaction, and if it doesn't hit, how close it comes. And then I would log, log some screenshots that I think may be interesting to me. Um, you know, it just builds your knowledge around to these things that make up your strategy. You'd be surprised at how many traders just use something because they've been told to use it rather than they've seen why to use it themselves, they've tested it, they've, they've used it themselves, they, they know what part that plays. Um, I'm sure lots of traders have been told that the previous close level is, is an important level, but how many have actually seen it, tested it and seen it? Uh, and these, this is just a, a really quick way that you can do that. You know, as you're, as you're testing each day, just plot that level, it takes two seconds, and just jot some, some uh, data down about it. You'll have a good idea of how long it typically gets, uh, how how long it typically typically takes to get hit. Sorry, um, how far away price can be typically, and still hit that level, um, and whether or not usually you get a reaction from it. Things like that. They're just good pieces of information to know. You never you're never going to know concretely whether these things will happen, but if you know that 80% of the time it's hit before 12 o'clock. Then that's a, that's a good piece of information to know. It, it all adds to your armory when uh, when trading. So yeah, that pretty much sums up um, this part of the backtest series. So what I will do now is, using this table, I will you know, fill out these entries with trades that I've backtested on a chart, which I, will, I think I'll show you in the next part of this video, uh, this series, sorry. And then uh, once we've got enough trades in there, I will build the results page whereby I can analyze the data that I've gathered to specifically answer these questions so that I can implement these or not implement these in my trading strategy. Um, so yeah, there's some examples here of uh, a couple that I've done already. So you can see, I'll quickly talk you through how it would look. So you can see date, time, trade direction. This is just general my strategy stuff, whether it's a retest, a continuation trade, what type of entry signal I got. Again, these are specific to um, the entry candle itself, so the open, high, low, close point of the candle, and then a swing point if there is any near, just because I could potentially put my stop above or below a swing point rather than my entry candle, might be something to consider. And then my first fixed target, my second uh, fixed target, my trailing, my trailing, my break even. Uh, and then what I've done here, this is basically grading what happens at this target. So if I scroll to the top, you can see that a P means that the target level was hit. A number one means that the um, signal stop was hit, but the trailing wasn't. So basically, uh, a one means if I'm short, price triggered my trade, stopped out my signal stop, then went down to target, and it didn't stop out that trailing stop. So, that no, so now I know that on this particular trade, if I'd used a trailing stop, I would have made the profit. 
I would have reached this level, but if I'd have used the signal stop, I wouldn't have. And number two means that both failed. So that's nice and easy. And uh, I'll just do that for all the um, different stop types. Uh, again, with the break even, this just means that if I'd have got to a certain point and implemented a break even, would that have happened? In this case, yes. And then I'll log some screenshots and some observations as I progress. Um, so I'll end this video here. I'll stop rambling now. Like I say, in the next part, we will look at actually filling in this table properly. And uh, we'll start to build some results ready to make some conclusions from this backtest. So I'll see you in the next part.